Hey, everyone. So, following my video yesterday, you guys told me that actually Team Secret had played Katarina for Tatsuri in the mid lane and that they'd got some pentakills and they'd made it work for a couple of games versus Action PH. I'm going to analyze this uh, and I'm going to run through uh, those two games because I have watched the first game and I'm going to watch the second game. But the first game had some clear differences to the second game, which I'm going to get into in some greater detail. But first of all, Thank you to G2A for sponsoring the channel, referencing in the description below. Uh, and also, at the end of this video, you'll be able to see a quick time lapse of me doing the draws. So the pinned comment down below will have the people who have won the giveaway for this month. I'm pausing it for the next month just so I can get everything in order. I can figure out how I want to flow my YouTube when I'm sort of adjusting to full-time work and stuff. You know, but uh, the winners for July will be in the pinned comment down below. Sorry, it's a little bit late. New job and everything. I'm a bit slow. Slower than I was previously. So this was the second game in the series. Um, funnily enough, this is actually the better game to play Katarina because you're dealing with a little less like direct CC. So of course, Braum is an, is, is an issue for Katarina. You can block the majority of her daggers from her ultimate and you have the stun. But Jack's stun is relatively slow. You have to be very specific with the Java knockup. And other than that, there isn't much like consistent CC to, you know, to be able to uncategorically be able to smash Katarina when she's using her ultimate. So this was actually the, the game that I thought Katarina was a better choice in. Um, especially because you have the Galio on your side as well. When I actually reviewed this game and we and we got to the, sort of the end scoreboard, I don't know where if I can find the end scoreboard here. Give me a second. I'm going too far. Here we go. It wasn't actually Tatsuri that, 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 that was really doing the majority of the lifting. It was Chewie on the Corky. What's really interesting is we if we go back to the first game, which was the first game between Team Secret and Action PH, where they uh, where they drafted the Katarina for the first time. If you have a look at it here. Um, Tatsuri drafted it into a Twisted Fate, a Galio, and a Wukong. And actually, this is like Wukong Ultimate. It's very difficult for Katarina to find consistent ultimates. Uh, Galio Knockup and also Galio Taunt, Twisted Fate Gold card. is a little bit more consistent CC to land for the Katarina. But funnily enough, this is the game where Tatsuri kind of did a lot more work. But the, the game was actually really interesting in itself because it wasn't a complete stomp. Um, and so I do want to kind of look at this game and analyze it in a little bit more depth. And, and specifically, I want to look at what, at what Tatsuri is doing as a Katarina player to make it work in competitive. Because I think there are very few people that can make Katarina work in competitive. And Katarina is one of those, those picks that if you're really good with her, you can find the angles that not many other Katarinas do. So we're going to have a look at the first game in this series and kind of analyze what Tatsuri was doing. But also, obviously, as normal, analyze the game in general. All right. I hope you guys can see the drawing on the screen right now. If you can't, I'm sorry. We are going to be analyzing this game between Action PH and Team Secret, like I said. Specifically, want to keep an eye on Tatsuri. Um, he's mid lane Katarina. Obviously, they haven't ordered the uh, the champions yet. But um, mid lane Katarina, it has a pretty rough matchup into Twisted Fate before five. After five, if Twisted Fate uses his card, then uh, or at least uses his pick a card, then obviously you have a window of opportunity to look for an ultimate, which is probably you know what Tatsuri might look to do. Though, realistically, both Twisted Fate and Katarina want to be roaming a lot. They want to be influencing smaller skirmishes and setting up plays. So I'm not expecting a huge amount of 1v1 action between Tatsuri and Kaz Kazuya? Kazuya. Um, I'm just calling him Kaz. Um, I'm not expecting a huge amount of you know action between Tatsuri and Kaz in the laning phase. Again, it is tough for a Katarina early on. You saw what happened. You just saw um, some people commit resources to try and push um Kaz in on that first wave share some experience across the board but he's managed to recruit pretty well and Twisted Fate does push lanes pretty nice in the early game or pretty well in the early game um so obviously has to be a little careful about getting ganked but also it's very difficult for Katarina to respond to that one of the things that Katarina finds really difficult um in general is when she has to uh, get when she gets pushed into tower so one of, the, one of the good ways if you're looking for a good way to kind of uh, I guess punish or make it make the laning phase difficult for a Katarina. You want to push her into the tower because she does struggle to farm under tower, you know, more so than a lot of other mid laners. Um, that's why Corky was considered classically decent into Katarina because you could just push her under tower very early on, and Katarina then found it a little bit more difficult to farm. To be honest with you though, Kaz was a little careless there. You saw that he had his flash burnt. Little careless, if I'm honest with you. He knew that he knew that the Zinza was there. I think he just disrespected the Zinza. Now this is an engage. I think you can go for if you're Yama. Uh, he did. Don't know if he ends up getting the kill here. He does. That's blue team first blood. Will he die to the tower? He will trade one for one. However, if you look at the minion wave. Look at this right here. That Renekton is currently losing minions uh, to the wave. 
Um, and so that is, you know, probably worth it. You get first blood and also you're denying minions from the Renekton. And because of the position of the minion wave now, it should just about reset and get back towards the middle of the lane. So that was actually a really nice kill. That's why it's worth it to commit for Yamada there. Um, he's burnt both his summoners, but Azar has also burned both of his summoners. And now he's a target, as you can see, a big roam up happening from Ryzen. He's waiting in the wings. And that wave, as we said, is pushing back towards Yamada. So this is a really, really great play. And Azar has massively overcommitted here. I mean, why did you go for that play? I don't think you beat the... I, I genuinely don't know if you beat the Akali 1v1 in that scenario anyway. And now you're just going to lose this whole wave of minions that gets shoved into the tower. So again, lots of resources committed. And this is working for action because if you look at the bot lane, Eli has just frozen the wave. It's not going to freeze for long, though, because he has just uh, pushed it to the tower. So this is now going to slow push towards Team Secret. Although, to be honest with you, Chewie is just doing everything he can to make sure it doesn't unfreeze. Uh, <laughs> that's actually going to keep it... No, it should It should start to push back. Now it's a Siege Minion Wave. So it's going to start to push back towards uh, Chewie. So he'll be fine. So good start for Action PH, honestly. And as I said, it's very low uh, action in the mid lane between Tatsuri and Kaz. Wondering where Kaz is going to use that first ultimate. I love how much roam that we got out of Sinalas. Um, you know, he, he was sort of walked all the way up to that top lane to make that play happen for the, the Akali. And now Yamada should be in a really strong spot. Like a two kill Akali is a great spot to be in. I think Eli is now just shoving the wave because obviously you want to try and get the opportunity to reset for the first dragon. And again, here comes some of the discussions on the recent patch. We have Rift Herald and Dragon spawning at the same time. Now, it looks like the setup for Action PH is going to be the dragon, although we have got some backs, um, meaning that we are going to be slow to respond here. Neither team are going to pounce on the objectives. So neither team setting up to pounce on the objectives. I do think that the, the team fight right now favors Action PH. Uh, you have a lot of CC. You've got a really strong level five, um, especially when Ryzen has his ultimate back up and available. Yamada is in a really, really strong spot. So I think in general... This is a, a good space for, for Action PH to want to team fight if they want to go for it. Looks like they're going to trade one for one, though. There's going to be the Dragon traded for the Rift Herald, as you can see. So you can see some sort of difference between these two teams now in terms of what they prioritize as objectives. And you're seeing this a lot in the pro scene. Um, especially teams that don't want to team fight super early on, especially when you don't have the Ike Spikes and the Katarina. Um, I think that, you know, avoiding team fights at this stage of the game is probably okay if you're if you're the katarina squad that's the exhaust coming through and yeah there you go katarina into cc not exactly fantastic this is a relatively good response now from um, action ph trade one for one here but yamazuya is here he should be able to find the executes my god he's got so much damage i think he a little bit misplayed because he had to flash there but that is i mean this is a huge lead again this is why i don't think team secret should have team fighted um, I don't think they needed to. I, I think, you know, at the end of the day, that's why they went for the Rift Herald in the first place. They did not want to group up and go for that dragon. And this will be the first uh, tower of the game. Big, big resets being given over to Tatsuri here. Just, yeah, we go. One kill for nothing, though. One kill for nothing is fine. We take that. We take that. Okay, sorry. So right now, like, if you're in, if you're in this stage of the game as Action PH, you've opened up the mid lane tier one. You can shove that in with Twisted Fate, and Twisted Fate can constantly look for ultimates and constantly look for roams. Somehow, we end up losing the top lane tier one. I think they're just a mismanager and resources there. Um, but losing the top lane tier one does give a nice bit of injection of gold over to Team Secret. And realistically, despite the kill score, you know, you are looking at only about 3,000 gold difference between the two teams, which is one tier three item split across the entire roster of players. Um, it looks like we're doing what you see classically when you've got a Twisted Fate and an Akali or something like that. We're opening up into a 1-3-1, one, one, um, which is where we have the Twisted Fate push one lane, the Akali push the other. You know, they can push lanes really easily. Akali's really strong in the 1v1 right now, and they're going to try and exert pressure. The, the problem with that in, in Wild Rift is I don't really, I, I just don't like it. The minion waves aren't, you can't stack the minion waves big enough most of the time, and it's very difficult to like truly exert side lane pressure unless you're something like you know a fiora or camille and you take towers in like a matter of seconds so i'm never i'm never like the hugest fan of like pure split push plays but i like this from action ph they're really just using that twisted fate as a bait to kind of group up and push up another tier one tower uh, which they're going to pick up in the bot lane so now they've got complete open this is all open here this this blue side jungle is completely open for them all right we see the twisted fate ultimate come out that is a very, very aggressive Twisted Fate ultimate, but they're going to pair it up with that Galio. Flash Taunt over the wall. Really, really, really nice Zinzao ultimate. Obviously, you've got to get inside that Zinzao circle to de deal damage. No one's really there right now. 
Looking for that second part of the execute. And Yamada, I mean, you don't lose these if you're the Akali. Surely you don't lose these. Big shutdown, I think, went the way of Katarina, though. That is a huge shutdown I think she picked up at that point. The shutdown onto Wukong, and I think it was a shutdown onto Kat uh, the, uh, the Akali, maybe. So, again, a big injection of gold for Team Secret. They're still not that far ahead, uh, so far behind, despite what the scores might tell you. But realistically, you are seeing the problems with Katarina in the start of this game. And, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. If you're at this stage of the game as Action PH, you have a four-kill Akali. You've got a pretty fed two-item Twisted Fate at this point. You've got a, a relatively fed Wukong jungle. Um, I don't think you should be losing these in this position. I think, like, re you know, you, I don't even think you get outscaled. I genuinely don't. I think you, I think you actually outscale um, Team Secret in this scenario. So from, from my... My thought process here by, is by watching this game is that Action PH have made a mistake at some point. That they've messed up something pretty massively because realistically, they, that I don't think they should be behind them. This, this is a very, very bold dive. Like, I don't think that you need to make this dive versus a level 10 Xin Zhao. Um, again, nice shield from Braun that actually keeps the, uh, the Katarina alive for the time being because I don't think you need to, um, to make that dive. If anything, like, keep Twisted Fate top. Like, keep Twisted Fate top here. And and then go set up for dragon. So if I if I were action PH, I would keep TF top, push that top lane tier one in, and then use his ultimate to get across map when I need to. But in the time being, it looks like they want to group up and go for the five v five, which I don't blame them. I think their five v five is pretty good, especially when they have all their ultimates available. We nearly have the Galio ultimate available, so that's going to be a nice little uh, nice little addition. What you're seeing here from Twisted, uh, from Team Secret is, in my opinion, the best thing to do in this scenario. You've just seen. Corky commit to the bot lane. They're going to use that Braum shield to buy them some time on that tower. That's a really, really big engage, though. You should be able to take down um, Trebo here. Yamada. I think Yamada. I think Yamada actually committed way too hard to that fight. I think he could have stayed. I think Yamada could have stayed on. Um... Yeah, I think that was a misplay. Honestly, I, I, I that, that's a big misplay in my opinion. I actually think Yamada could have stayed on the on the Zinzao. I think he, he he dived into the middle of the team. I, I need to go back and watch that, honestly, because that felt like a big throw. Right. Okay. Maybe I can play it in slow motion here. Uh, playback speed 0.5. Okay, right. Nice ultimate. This is a, such a nice combo setup. You're going to burn a few flashes. Uh, and great from Trebor. Again, he's bought some space between himself and the rest of uh, Action PH. Now, now watch this. This... This, in my opinion, was actually the mistake from Yamada. I think if I'm Yamada, um, I stay here and just... Because I'm, I'm, I'm in the Xin Zhao Shroud. I'm in the Xin Zhao Ultimate. I probably just burn him down and then use the second part of my ultimate to get across the wall. But now, you have a Braum who's going to block any any uh, any angle coming in. And I think uh, Ryzen over here, who's, who's, who's basically only committed onto the Katarina. So if, if, maybe if Yamada was able to get onto the Katarina here, that would have been better. Uh, but all you're going to see is hammers jump over the wall and put the shield up on 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 the uh, on the uh, the Kali. I think if I were Yamada here, I stay on the, the Zinzao, take him out, and then go across the wall. Just think that there was a two you, you split like you've got two splits of the team fight here. You've got four members of Team Secret here with two members of Action PH, and then you've just got Zinzao versus the world over here. And because Corky is so late to the party because he was like you don't need like guys you don't need to worry about a Rift Herald that's that far up the lane. You don't need to worry about it. And even if you do, if you lose tier one bot, who cares? You know, if you get a big team fight win here, 5v5, you're in a much better spot. So this is a four versus five as well. I think they commit so, and the, the reason I don't like this move here as well is that you're 4v5. I think you're overestimating how strong the Akali is here. Um, yeah, so watch this. Hammers jumps in. They, they completely body block the Akali. She can't do anything. And then this is where Katarina starts to pick up all the resets. Um, that is a melee Twisted Fate. And again, Tatsuri comes in, starts to pick up some resets here. And that's, that's, that's too much gold over to the Katarina now. You've, you've given a double kill. And that honestly, honestly, that was a mistake from Action PH. That might be the defining fight here that gi has given a new lease of life over to Team Secret. But still... Like, I think you have the scaling. I think you have the tools to deal with Katarina. You know, at the end of the day, I don't think this is super over. But one of the big problems is that when you feed Katarina, sometimes she can just burst you out before you, you even have a chance to respond. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sold on what I just saw there. And I think partly for the fact that it was 4v5 and partly because I think they 
They they just overestimated how strong their backline dive was, and they completely separated out their own team fights. So not sold. Also, this is um this build on Corky. Don't like it. Don't like that build on Corky. I think the build that's quite popular right now is just Essence Reaver into Solari Charge Blade. You don't even go Manamune. I think Manamune is... You don't need the extra scaling that Manamune provides you. You're already super strong in the late game. And now you look at Action PH, they don't really have the ultimates. Um, and I think in general, they've now lost the setup on this fight. So Ryzen goes in. That's the knockup here. He's looking for it. That's the Zinza ultimate again versus ranged. It's super, super strong. In goes Yamada to the back line. 1v5. Can't find the execute. And then we have... Again, just a super, super strong, um, super, super strong, uh, what's it called? Ah, slight missed, slight missed time on the wild cards there. The, the wild cards might have actually killed the Katarina if it was, um, if it was slightly better, but a super strong, uh, Renekton just on the front line. Again, you know, Akali, Team Secret are too good at collapsing on the Akali here, and I think that's the problem. They, 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 they are way too good at collapsing on the Akali, and I think I want to see Yamada spend more time bursting out the front line before he goes for a full-on dive to the back line. Because all you're seeing is, is Treyball just pop the ulti at the start of the fight. Which means that Twisted Fate can't do damage. And, and Corky can't do damage. And they can't get past the, 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 the Zinzao. So if you're Action PH, you actually need to kill the Zinzao before you can really start to get your damage down in a team fight. Because he, because Treyball just zones with, with his ultimate. He just completely zones out the rest of the fight. And that's why Yamada gets completely split. It's why you need to be careful if you're diving into the backline as an Akali versus a Zinzao, because a good Zinzao will just ult the rest of your team away, and then it becomes 1v5, like we've seen in the last two team fights for Yamada, and he's just not strong enough to 1v5 at this point. Like, he's actually behind on gold to the Katarina. He's actually, like, behind, like, he's, he's even with gold with most of his team. He's not exactly like he's super fed. Like, at the start of the game, he got so many resources, and I don't really know where they've gone, if I'm honest with you. I don't know where they've gone, really. <laughs> So yeah, I think there was a big lead that was given to Yamada here and a couple of just poorly executed team fights from Action PH. But I've got to say great team fights from Team Team Secret. Like I'm, I'm, I'm obviously, I'm kind of putting a lot of the downer on Action PH, but honestly, Treybor has been, like in both these last team fights, Treybor has been absolute MVP because of the way that he played these team fights out. Like honestly, um, just the, you can see the value of a Xin Zhao jungle versus ranged or primarily ranged damage. Um, obviously you've got the Wukong, obviously you've got Yamada, but they're being separated and easily focused by their team. So you just have to be a little careful about how you choose to play around the Zinzao. This Zinzao build is super interesting as well. He's gone for Force of Nature. So clearly worried about the Akali uh, and the Twisted Fate, and obviously the primary the primary uh, magic damage coming out from Corky. Actually, this is a, now that I think about it, this is a really bad draft from Action PHs, I and mean, they've made it way too easy to itemize defensively. They've got an 80% damage magic damage dealer in the form of Corky, and then they have um Akali and Twisted Fate. Like your only your, and then you have uh, Galio. Your only AD damage in this entire comp is is Ryzen on the on the um on the Wukong. So now that I even think about it, this is a really awful composition. Like if you're drafting Corky bot, you need to draft AD either in the Baron lane or in the mid lane. And obviously, right now, for the most part, Baron Lane has a slightly easier source of AP damage. Um, again, look, I mean, Braum probably, I mean, Braum has probably got so much magic resist built into his kit, like, you, you, it's going to be so difficult to burst through the front line. When we have a look at the items again, I'll talk about it, because we might see a lot of magic resist being built up on, like, things like the Renekton and the, the, the Braum, as well as the fact that we've already got Force of Nature for Treybor, um, which is pretty insane. Yeah, so nothing, so Mercury treads, and then we have a Force of Nature for, uh, for, for Braum as well. Yeah, like, I mean, they've, they've, they've made it so easy to itemize defensively against, uh, against them. And if you're not snowballing, that, that, you know, if you're not snowballing, it's just not working. Great taunt, though. This is a nice engage, actually. Braum taken down very low. Doesn't have that Gargoyle stone plate, and that's the immediate kill. In goes on to peel or the peel back, but Katarina's given way too much space at this point in time. Looks like it's one versus the world. That's a really nice ultimate, though. Yamada just dives back. Nice knockup. Go in. Go in. Oh, <laughs> That was really well executed by Action PH, honestly. I thought it was going to be a disaster because of the cleanup from um, uh, the cleanup potential from Tatsuri, but that was super well executed. Great stopwatch timings or great, great um, stasis timings from Eli and from Yamada there. The problem is, again, though, they're on a timer. We talked about it. They're, on, they're now on a really big timer. That timer is the defensive timer that's stacking up and the fact that, you know, eventually... Uh, if you miss time any CC, you know, you just give one opportunity over to Tatsuri and he'll start to just obliterate your backline because Katarina has a lot of damage that does scale rel relatively well into the late game. 
But that was a really well executed fight, honestly, from Action PH. But I still think their comp sucks. Because it's just too much magic damage. Just way too much magic damage. Um, and Hamas has just picked up, oh my god, Hamas has just picked up Abyssal Mask, which is a great facilitator for Tatsuri. Like, if Hamas, if Hamas is in the middle of the fight, Tatsuri is now going to be dealing extra magic damage to those of them around him. Oof, this is, um, this is definitely a bit of a, a bit of a pain point. Okay, so that's a big engage. Fla I mean, you're flashing for the, the Renekton here. Okay, knock up. I mean, you're spending a lot of resources and getting this Renekton down. That's a really great stasis from him again. And Tatsuri, that, I mean, look, 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 you're seeing right there that they reacted really well. But they just, the, the, the stopwatch timing from Tatsuri was really good, and they have the backup damage to make this work. I mean, the Katarina didn't really do anything apart from pro provide a distraction, but again, I don't get why you're committing so many resources into trying to kill a Renekton. You can't catch a Renekton, especially with Death Dance, and you have to, you have to, you know, you have to keep an eye on the fact that he's got stasis. Like, there are so many stasis enchants picked up here. Three, and two gargoyles. You're not really catching anyone easily. So, like, Making these, I think you need to look for big team fight engages rather than anything else. Oh, your murder gets caught out. Nice prediction there from the Zinzal. I think here, Action PH, unfortunately, giving over the Baron when again it's them making the mistakes. Like they, they don't need to, they, they should have just set up on Dragon, set up on Dragon, wait for them as a five to come and check through that choke point, and then jump on them in the choke point. Save your, save your CC. For primarily for the Katarina. Try and save that CC for the Katarina. Um, as you did, like Katarina didn't even get her ultimate off here, but she wasn't she she wasn't the damage source, she wasn't the problem. Do you manage to get away with a dragon? They have the package to back out as well. So they get something out of this, but the Baron is now going to be a problem. You're going against a Baron uh Varus, and so he's gonna be able to clear and push waves really quickly. He's gonna be able to poke you off the towers, and they should be able to start chunking down some of these towers in the mid and side lanes. So Team Secret are now ahead in gold. Finally have kind of wrestled control of this game. And again, for Action PH, I'm wondering whether, again, compositionally, they're struggling to get through the front line. They've gone for the engage here. I think you commit. Yeah, okay, that's one. Keep, keep, your, eye, keep your eye on Tatsuri. Keep your eye. Really nice dodge. Watch, your, watch Tatsuri. He's waiting for the opportunity. He's waiting for the... Oof. Tatsuri. Just used his ult on the spot by mistake there. However, it doesn't matter. He's actually just getting resets. He's just getting resets. I'm going to be honest with you guys. You guys hyped up Tatsuri's Katarina. I wouldn't say it's Tatsuri that's kind of popped off this game. I think, I honestly think it's been Trebor and Azar, and then Tatsuri's just cleaned up. Is he going to get the Penta? There's the ulti and the Penta. Okay, there we go. There's the Penta. Should we go over and look at the score screen? Right. Okay, guys. Tatsuri's Katarina, clearly, clearly good, because he, he's good at finding those angles and finding those opportunities, but I don't, I, I don't think, I honestly don't think he was like the one that carried the game. I actually think Trebo was the one that carried the game, and so was Azar. Um, I think these two had insane team fights this game. Like Azar 1v5 on the front line, and Trebo was some insane ultimates. Honestly, they set Tatsuri up for success. Tatsuri was really good at picking his angles. Clearly, as you can see, he's got all these great badges. He's done loads of damage. Like, completely agree with you. But I wouldn't say it was him that was making the plays. Like, he was he was capitalizing and finding the right moments, which is what a good Katarina player should do. But the rest of the game, I was so impressed with how these two played. Really think these two played absolutely fantastically. Trebor and Azar, they had an amazing game. Just how they zoned out. I do think Action PH should have won, if I'm complete, being completely frank with you. No idea what this Corky build is about, by the way. It seems ridiculously... I don't know. Just not a big fan of it, honestly. I think Infinity Edge, Charge Blade... Sorry, uh, Essence Weaver, Charge Blade, Infinity Edge. Skip. Skip. You don't need those. Regardless, I think Action PH actually should have won this game. I think they just had some very awkward engages that didn't quite go their way. Um, and I think they just misplayed a little bit. But got to be massive credit to Trayball. He had some game-changing ultimates in those team fights, and Azar himself was absolutely nutty. Plus the fact you've got to look at the composition and say magic damage, magic damage, magic damage, magic damage, and then you've got one force of nature, abyssal mask, second force of nature. Um, I think everyone's running Mercury, hex drinker, Mercury. Like the people are just too easy to itemize magic resist against this. Um, okay, so there you go. Clearly, you can play Katarina in competitive, but I think you have to have a really good team. And you have to be really good at Katarina. <laughs> there you go. And also, I don't even really think they should have won this game. 
I think Action PH probably should have won this game, but they just kind of messed up. But there you go. Katarina is very good at capitalizing on people that mess up.